Now this tiny PC just went toe to toe with AAA games and 4K video editing. Meet the Geekom Mini IT13, powered by the Intel i9-13900HK. I tested it with Black Ops 6, Miles Morales, Cyberpunk 2077, and even the Path of Exile 2, without using eGPU at all. No external help either, just raw power from something that fits in your hand. Now this is the Geekom IT13. It's rocking the Intel i9-13900HK, which has 14 cores, 20 threads, and up to 5.4 gigahertz turbo. You get Intel Iris XE graphics card as well. Now this part, it comes with a, a slot for an extra SSD. So that's really good if you want to add in more storage. Here as well, they have another slot for another SSD right there. Plus their one terabyte card right there. So if you wanna swap that out for a larger one, you can as well. But the easiest route is to just add in your SSD. And then here we see the DDR4s. Up to 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM and dual M.2 SSD support with Wi-Fi 6E in a body barely bigger than a sandwich. One of these is 16 gigs. Put it back is to just do that and then press down. Same with this guy, and press down, and that's it. So it's nice that Geekom makes it available so that you can upgrade your storages. A few options there, really good. To put it back, you just need to show the where the front is, and press it down, there it is. Put the four screws back, and that's it. It has two USB 4 ports, so you can run an external GPU. It comes with two HDMI ports as well, so that you can use up to four displays with this. It also comes with a USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 2.0, and a 2.5 gigahertz ethernet slot. In the front, there's also another two USB 3.2 Gen 2 and a headphone jack. Now on paper, the i9 inside this thing punches hard. Now in Cinebench R23, the multi-core almost hit 12,000 points there and in single core it's just well over 1700 points which is really good in geekbench 6 backs that up with strong numbers across the board i also tested the ssd and it came out really strong as well this is great when you're transferring files read or write is super fast now the power usage at the lowest is 9.4 watts using it for web browsing media consumption came up to 20 watts and when we are testing it with cinebench it went up to the highest at 62 watts the fan noise is not bad at all in normal usage but when we are using it with cinebench it went at the highest 52 decibels and the temperature went up to 59 degrees celsius which in my opinion is fairly cool now in black ops 6 1080p, low settings, I hovered around 50 to 55 frames per second. The Iris XE is clearly working overtime here, but it stayed playable. Not competitive level, but I actually played online with this and it's not bad at all. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, this one shocked me as well. In 1080p with FSR on and low settings gave me a pretty stable 35 to 50 frames per second. Cutscenes dipped slightly, but web slinging, Totally doable. Now Cyberpunk 2077, okay, let's be real. This is like a very heavy game to play, but at 1080p as well, uh, low settings here, I got 25 to 30 frames per second. It's playable in a pinch, but not ideal. And with integrated graphics, it actually did really well. Now in Path of Exile 2, this one ran the smoothest because it's CPU bound. 
1080p on low settings gave me around 50 to 60 frames per second, though big spell effects dropped it to about 40 frames per second. Still a great experience in my opinion overall. Now I edited this entire video on the Mini IT13. The 4K footage, transition, and even some light fusion effects. And the playback was smooth with optimized media and renders aren't that bad at all. Now it's not a Mac studio, nor does it cost that much, but with a mini PC without a GPU, it handled YouTube workloads like a champ. So if you wanna start a YouTube channel, it doesn't cost you that much at all. Just get a mini PC and you're good to go. Now I didn't use an eGPU for this review, but the mini IT13 can support one via USB 4. So if you ever need more horsepower, you know, for ray trace gaming or 3D work, you can plug in something like the brand new RTX 5080 and turn this into a stealth powerhouse. Now compare this to the Mac Mini M4, as you could see. The size difference is significant, where the GCOM is actually a lot smaller. There's the top of it, and then the physical sides are, as you can see, they're about the same slimness there, but because um, the feet as well kind of makes it so that they're about the same height. The Mac Mini M4. The SSDs are not swappable, the RAMs are not swappable, but the Geekom is fully customizable and upgradable even with the eGPU. This top plate, if you wanted to, fully customizable, you could take it off and put a custom plate on top, which is really nice. And to put it back is super easy. So here's the deal. The Mini IT13 with i9-13900HK is not just a media PC or a glorified Chromebook. It's a legit desktop replacement for the right kind of user. There's a bunch of pros here as you can see. It's compact, clean design, surprisingly strong CPU performance. It can game even without a GPU. Excellent for editing and multitasking as well. The USB 4 and the eGPU support equals future proof because you can always upgrade your GPU. Now some of the cons here is the Iris XE of course still limited. The fan can get a little bit louder and full load but it's not that bad. Gaming is playable as well but not maxed out. So if you want to max that out I would just suggest using an eGPU which is compatible with it. So if you're a student, low budget content creator or a tech nerd who wants raw power in a portable box this thing is wild, especially knowing you can add more power later on. Now for under $1,000, it's one of the most versatile PCs I've ever tested in this channel. Now let me know what you'd pair it with, a GPU, dual monitors, uh, VR, drop a comment and sub if you love mini PCs that punch above their weight. Thanks for watching everyone. If you want to get one of these, I'll link this down below. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!